Summer is here. I'm Thomas LeBlanc. And I'm Trana Winter. Welcome to Lucky Stars, an Astro Pop Odyssey, where we take you through the zodiac by roasting the big celebrities born under each sun sign. It's officially my birthday month. We are entering cancer season. It's the beginning of summer. It's my favorite time of the year. It's my most hated time of the year. I hate summer. And the thing that cracks me up the most about Cancerians is that you are the type of people who are like counting down to your birthday like months in advance. Every Cancer I know in March is like, my birthday's three months away. We're a cardinal sign and cardinal signs love attention. Cancer season runs from June 21st to July 22nd. It's a very emotional sign. Our ruling planet is actually the moon and I know some people say the moon is not a planet, but if you believe in astrology, you just roll with it. It's debatable to some, but I identify with the moon, so uh, the moon is my ruling planet. Back from the planet the moon, from the planet moon. Isn't the moon, moon a star? The pl no, the moon is a planet, darling. Sun so before we get to the stars, let's talk about what it means to be a Cancer. Thomas, there is no one better to walk us through this sign than you. So tell us the real deal truth. What does it mean to be a Cancerian? What are the main traits? What's going on? Number one on the list is, of course, we're hypersensitive. We are the most sensitive sign of the zodiac. Sorry, Pisces. But the thing is, it's not a flaw. It's not a flight, it's actually a superpower. And my advice to all the cancers out there is if you're hypersensitive, own it, embrace it. It's your superpower. So one of the other most common signs in cancers is this idea of home. Cancers love to be home. They're the crab. They retreat into their shell. They're introverted. But home is really where you find it. It can be at the club. It can be on a comedy stage. And for cancers, the most important aspect of home is really family. Uh, and Trana, we co-host Chosen Family. So I think it really makes sense for me that I'm so attached to my crew, my people. And these are the most important people to me. Um, and one example of that, actually, so in my case, it's a chosen family, but some people are really attached to their uh, biological family, is I am born the same day as Khloe Kardashian. Lord help you. Yes, yeah, so I'm born the same day as the sister who cares more about her other sisters than them care about her. Don't be rude. Are you kidding me? Well, I mean, if there's anyone to learn family values from, it's the Kardashians. <laughs> what the f like, are you kidding, you I mean, that's all nice and lovely, but we have to also acknowledge that cancers are very moody. They can be temperamental. One minute, they're sort of, you know, happy-go-lucky, then they get really sad. What's the deal there? I mean, it's a summer weather, Trana. It can be a storm, it can be a heat wave, it can be beautiful sunshine, it can change on a dime. Now that we have a bit of a better understanding of Cancerians and their main traits, let's take a look at some of the biggest stars born under this sign. I just want to warn you, dear Cancerians, that it was kind of slim pickings when it came to finding the best, coolest cancer celebrities. Not the most glamorous, exciting bunch, I have to admit. Although the two greatest cancer celebrities are Solange and Missy Elliott, but we can't roast them because they're perfect. I'm not the one that you should be making your enemy. So, Let's start with a true Cancerian icon, Princess Diana, born July 1st. Now, of course, some would argue that Princess Diana is a perfect angel, and she definitely does represent some of Cancer's best traits. She's loyal, loving, caring. She's the people's princess. But one of the Cancerian traits that I find she embodies the best is being vindictive. And I don't mean that in a negative sense. I mean it in the way that I am living for it. We all know that her marriage to Prince Charles was a nightmare. The royal family treated her horribly. But when they divorced, Princess Diana did something that no royal has ever done. She got hot. 
And that's the ultimate revenge. She started taking athleisure to a whole new level, wearing sweatshirts and short shorts and sneakers, showing off those amazing legs. She reinvented the little black dress. She danced with John Travolta. She got the ultimate revenge, and that's why I love her. From one Brit to another, my first pick is George Michael, born June 25th. He's uh, an icon of the 80s. Of course, he's known for Careless Whisper and that sax solo is just like cancer hotness. He's also known for Faith. He's known for a song called I Want Your Sex. And if you Best. didn't think that cancers were hot, change your mind. I want your sex. You know, George is all about hot sex, of course, with the music video for Freedom 90, uh, where he's really built this uh, chosen family of supermodels, nothing less. And of course, he's known for Outside, his coming about anthem. I came out to that song. And I think there's something really interesting in the idea of coming out of the closet and coming out of your shell, right? Like the closet is like you're inside the closet, you're inside the shell. But George, in the 90s, when he was caught having uh, sex in a public bathroom, was like, you know what? I'm gay and I'm proud. And he came out with this song. So next up is someone I'm really embarrassed to say that I love so much. It's Jessica Simpson, born July 10th. The first pair of heels I bought were from Jessica Simpson's line that made her way more money than her music ever made her because the music is not great. Of course, we all got to learn who Jessica is through Newlyweds, the reality TV show in the early 2000s. I mean, talk about a Cancerian moment, getting to see Jessica wear her heart on her sleeve, getting to see Jessica at home. And I wish that Gen Z could understand how much of their world exists because Jessica couldn't tell the difference between tuna and chicken. That was a defining moment that changed the culture, changed the world forever. Is this chicken what I have or is this fish? I know it's tuna, but it, it says chicken by the sea. Now, Jessica for me is definitely someone who totally wears her heart on her sleeve. She totally represents that emotionality of cancer. One of the ways that it sort of manifests itself for Jessica is the way that she performs on stage. She holds nothing back. She is so extra. She is like having an emotional exorcism every time she performs. It is hilarious. Take a look. I know you do. I've got so much With a I don't understand how you can say that there are not enough cancer stars. I mean, <laughs> Jessica Simpson is, is an icon. I love her so much. I also really loved her book. So last year she came out with her memoir called Open Book, another major Cancerian moment. Again, letting those emotions come through. One of my favorite parts in the book, and it sort of gets back to that Cancerian vindictiveness and desire for revenge, is that when she got divorced from Nick Lachey, she had a fuck list. So basically she made a list of all of the hot Hollywood guys that she wanted to fuck, and she <laughs> fucked them all. And that is amazing. I like, I put the book down and I like gave her a standing ovation in my room. I love that, I am inspired by that. Thank you, Jessica for all that you've given us. My next pick is musically a person who I would say is the opposite of Jessica Simpson, yet they have a lot in common. Vindictive, wear their heart on their sleeve, and my pick is Lana Del Rey. So Lana is a controversial pick because for years people thought she was born really early in the day, like in the middle of the night from the, the 20th to the 21st. But actually, 
uh, she rectified on Twitter a few years ago, and she's born later in the afternoon. So that, that puts her just on the cusp of cancer. So that's very debatable because lying about being a Gemini is the most Gemini thing you could do. But also if you're a cancer, you never ever want people to believe you're a Gemini. Of course not. My moon's in Leo, my cancer is sun. So for years I was like, Lana's a strange Gemini. I was maybe buying the theory that like, it's a persona that she created because obviously her real name is Elizabeth Grant, all the Lana stands know that. Um, but when you start looking at, listening to the music and looking at her work, like she is such a Cancerian. One of her biggest hits, Summertime Sadness, I believe is like peak cancer. I got that summertime, summertime sadness. So I'm actually, happy now that Trulana identifies as a as a cancer and that she's proud to be a cancer because we don't have that many charismatic music stars a lot of the music stars actually who are cancers are a bit sad or just lack that fire energy so a few example of, of, of music stars who are cancer Selena Gomez Ariana Grande Alessa Cara like not necessarily like Lady Gaga or Madonna level but you know they <laughs> They're sensitive and, and, and I appreciate that. I love that you called Lana Del Rey charismatic. I think that's also a little <laughs> bit of a stretch personally, but granted <laughs> she has more charisma and energy than Ariana Grande, who only puts in the most minimal of efforts at all times. And I mean, we have to, we like, L Lana is a hustler. She works hard, she puts music out. I love her music. I believe Lana Del Rey is the Bob Dylan of the gays, to be honest with you. And I believe she's more emo than all of emo and pop punk combined. Like, I love that about her. I can see that. Although I would argue that our next celebrity is actually the Bob Dylan of the gays. <laughs> and it's Lindsay Lohan, born <laughs> July 2nd. <laughs> Why is she the Bob Dylan of the gays? She just is. It doesn't need to be explained. When I think of cancers, I think of Lindsay Lohan dancing in Mykonos, that clip that went viral. Honey, this is how you throw a party in Mykonos, bitch. The freedom, the fun, the emotion, the beach hair, it's all there. To me, that represents the moment when a cancer finally allows themselves to come out of the crab shell and live and actually be happy. People think that they can mess with Lindsay Lohan, but they can't. Um, you know, her song Rumors that came out a few years ago to me is another cancer anthem. It's all about taking control. It's all about telling people to leave you the fuck alone. Stay out of my business, stay out of my way. Let me just be. To me, there's not a more Cancerian moment in pop than rumors. And to wrap it up, a shout out to uh, our editor Lido, who is born the same day as Patrick Stewart. I'm no Star Trek fan, uh, but he's a legend. And he's like such a cool guy that people actually thought he was queer, but apparently, He's not. Morning, darling. No, we cannot just automatically assume that the most talented people are queer, even though that tends to be the case. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. That is a wrap on cancer season. Good luck with the emotions and the summer heat. Stay hydrated. The sweat and the tears combined might kill you, so be careful out there. And we will see you back here for Leo season. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and treat your Cancerian friend to a beautiful present for their birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, Thomas. Happy early birthday. Thanks. <laughs>